Beethoven's Eighth Sonata for violin and piano has been a regular recital staple for you. Apparently, you're very fond of the work. What's the attraction? Well, to be very, very uh, forthright and very frank, this sonata has no special significance for me. I do enjoy playing it, there is no doubt about it, because there is a lot of virtuosity and a lot of technical display, but mainly I place it because I'm usually playing the very heavy, what I call artillery, which is Brahms or Bach or uh, masterpieces like that. And this is a kind of an element which raises the spirit of the listener. It's very cheerful, very dance-like. I enjoy performing it and it lightens the mood of either what went on before or what is yet to come. So this is merely a, ra a rather diplomatic gesture on my part to place the uh, number eight sonata among all the other works that I'm going to be performing. Unlike Beethoven's eighth sonata, the Kreutzer has been out of your repertoire for decades. Why did you drop the work and what made you add it to this particular program after all that time? Well, that's a very interesting question. I played the Kreutzer Sonata as a child prodigy. Uh, my teacher, Professor Carl Flesch, I was then in London just before the war, and he wanted me to play this sonata, which uh, I found very interesting as a child, and I played it with a very young pianist also who was playing in his class. Um, and then I dropped it, not uh, consciously because I didn't want to play it, but I played many, many other works. And in those days, I would have to say that most of the concerts which I performed uh, just prior to the war, uh, number two, World War number two, uh, were mostly with orchestras, so that I did not uh, concentrate on recitals, which would include any sonata. Then, many, many years later, I decided to include the Kreutzer Sonata. I had heard by then many, many performances by other violinists, and I have to confess that I regarded this sonata uh, very much as a showcase for virtuosity, because that was the majority of violinists who I heard who performed it in this way, uh, displaying uh, a lot of technique and uh, trying probably to captivate audiences with this kind of performance, which showed off virtuosity more than anything else, and probably I followed that trend. Years went by, I matured, and I really never uh, played it again for years and years and years. I didn't think that I had a special affinity with this particular sonata. I played most of the other sonatas, and by then, one of my real favorite sonatas was, in fact, number 10. I thought this was the most profound piece of music I had ever played, and I, I really loved this, this sonata number 10. Didn't think much of the Kreutzer Sonata, except as a virtuoso display of technique. All of a sudden, out of the blue, Mr. Ernie Gilbert, called me up and he said, Ida, why don't you play the Kreutzer Sonata by Beethoven? I said, okay, if you want me to play the sonata, I've got nothing against it, among other works that I'm going to do for, perform for DVD, there is no problem. I took the music and began to study this work. The more I played it, I began really to be completely hypnotized and fascinated by the contents of this gigantic masterpiece. And I said to myself, oh my God, how could I have missed what is in it? 
it's one, it's a, it's a monument. And I was absolutely overwhelmed. Every phrase, it's, it's almost terrifying in what is going on in that music. It displays everything that is in the uh, human being's soul. There is drama in it, there is violence, there is aggression, as well as many, many spiritual themes, which is absolutely shattering whenever I listen to it. And I said, oh my God, I discovered, I rediscovered something that I never heard uh, performed by other violinists, with all due respect to all my wonderful colleagues. But I thought that I will try to do more justice to what's in it. And I have to say that I'm immensely grateful to Mr. Ernie Gilbert, who runs this company, VAI, for uh, actually for reacquainting me with this one of the greatest masterpieces in the violin literature.